Ah, good evening, and welcome to Having a Drink with Mink. I'm your host, Jason Drink. Death Wish, huh? <laughs> what can you say? This 1974 film has gone on to become a classic in no small part due to the fantastic performances. Uh, not only do you have Charles Bronson in his star turn as Paul Kersey, but you have Jeff Goldblum uh, in a debut performance as Freak Number One, a role that would, um, well, pretty much define his career. <laughs> Uh, I was really excited to pick this up for 49 cents at my local comic book shop, that's Ides Entertainment in downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, now, I don't have a Laserdisc player, but a uh, quick trip over to Amazon.com, $429 later, and uh, I'm well on my way to watching this film as it was meant to be seen. Very excited about that. But uh, hey, we're not here to talk about movies, are we? Or are we? Eh. Maybe next time. Uh, I'll tell you what we are going to talk about. We're going to talk about comics. We're going to talk about magazines. Uh, very excited to pick up some new ones for my LCS. What do we have right here? Right off the bat, we have this cool old collectible toy and values magazine. This is the Monster Mania issue. Uh, this is from 1991, and uh, it was pretty cool. Back in the day... This was uh, what you had to get your information from. This It has an interview in it with a Grandpa from uh, Al Lewis from the Monsters. So you can bet that the next time I see him, I'm going to... What's that? Aww. Well... At any rate, Al may no longer be with us, but Monster Magazines certainly are. And uh, I was really happy. I went down to I'd specifically to pick up a copy of Toy Ventures Magazine. And this focuses on the Azrak Hamway action figures. Now, as a kid, I had a few of those. I remember uh, playing under my bed with uh, my Mego Spidey and my uh, Azrak Hamway Frankenstein. And uh, unlike those old magazines, uh, you get fantastic, almost to scale, full-color pictures of these toys. And uh, what's really remarkable is there are many variations of these. And uh, you don't just get one set of murky black and white images, but uh, Brian knocks it out of the park with presentation and provides you with uh, some truly fantastic documentation. It's both... Uh, educational and illuminating and uh, we have some really cool you know design work going on in here as well the magazine is uh, very aesthetically appealing and uh, has some great catalog ads things that uh, you're only gonna find in a publication like this I can't say enough if you would uh, be interested there are still copies of number one available Number two will be out uh, shortly, from what I understand. Check the link below. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, head on over and pick up your copy of Toy Ventures. Very cool magazine. Very excited to support something like this in the future. Something that I've always wanted to see. Uh, next up, we have a couple Warren Spirits, 11 and 12. Uh, when I was a young person, uh, these were... Uh, eye-opening to me. They contained uh, such fantastic art, such remarkable stories, and uh, no filler to speak of. I think that there might be some catalog stuff in the back pages, but uh, that in itself was always a pleasure. Hey, speaking of Migos, check that out. All your favorites. Four bucks for a Circle Suit Spider-Man. I'm in. What else? Uh, I picked up a few Vampirellas because I was just feeling that Warren mood. And, uh, well, these are nice covers, aren't they? <laughs> Next up, we're going to look at some of these here comic books. And uh, you know me. I'm a fan of the Archie Archie verse. And uh, here we have Betty and Veronica's Summer Fun number 140. Well, that's a lot of summer fun. <laughs> 
That's a nice little cover. Uh, this is a very, very much a reader, what some might even call a dish rag. But, uh, you know, for a buck, I'm not about to leave this behind. Come on, y'all. You know what I'm saying. Uh, then we have uh, this very striking Archie Madhouse cover. Love that. No fishing. No peopling. How do you suppose the shark made that side? Uh, what do we have here? Uh, Life with Archie and uh, Arch is rocking a zoot suit. It's a good look for him and the Riverdale gang for certain. We have some laugh. And uh, Veronica, so rich that even her toy race car track has a chauffeur. What a gal, huh? Then we have uh, Life with Archie, and this is uh, looks pretty interesting. Usually the Riverdale teens don't experience uh, phenomena such as giants, but here we go. Can't wait to check that one out. We have, uh, you may have seen this one before. It snuck in there. Big Ethel, you know, she always does. And uh, Archie's Christmas Lovin'. I'm looking forward to doing a uh, exclusive comics for breakfast Archie Christmas uh, in the very near future, so this will probably be part of it. Uh, following up on our uh, Josie and the Pussycats issue with Demonic Possession, we have an issue of Life with Archie, where Arch and uh, the gang get trapped in a tomb. <laughs> So we'll see what happens there. Could it possibly be half as good as uh, Josie being possessed by a malevolent force uh, that uh, purples the very air with maledictions? That's that's really a hard road to uh, hoe for sure, but we'll see. We'll see if Archie can pull it out. Well, <laughs> hopefully we won't see that. Uh, it's it's just soda, I swear. Uh, next up, a lovely issue of Ghostly Haunts. I was really excited to find this because, uh, gosh, I'm a sucker for Monster Girls. Another Ghostly Haunts. Oh, wow. Check that out. <laughs> major oh more ghostly haunts wow you know if the interiors are half as good as the covers then uh, i'm truly in for a treat but uh lots of times the interiors might not uh, deliver the same punch Ooh, pretty spooky stuff huh kids ah another archie snuck in there jughead what's he doing And then, oh, more Archie. You don't want to see these. I'll just clip through these real quick. Oh, God, there's a ton of them. Next up, uh, another issue of the Crusaders. Now, uh, we covered the Crusaders issue very early on in Comics for Breakfast, and I'd been hoping to find a good one uh, to re review as a follow-up in here. Primal Man? Well, we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> Captain Marvel? Ah, back when the Captain was still rocking uh, the white hair. You know, it was uh, that intermediate phase after he'd gotten rid of his, uh, you know, white and green toothpaste costume, but before he'd gone, all surfer dude. And, uh, hey, 20 cents, I'm all over a book like this. Then we have, oh, yeah, you know, talking about some Conan, baby. John Buscema. This is a really cool book where Conan fights his doppelganger. Ooh, look out, Conan. And, uh, hey, you know, the only time that Disney gets any money from me whatsoever is when they put these things out. I can't really imagine they're making much in the way of money, but uh, I'm going to, you know, fill holes in my collection when I can. I uh, have a pile of uh, Conan classics, I guess, from, like, the late 90s. Picked them up for 50 cents a piece. Number one wasn't in there. Uh, but I got this for 99 cents. Can't go wrong. Next up, my kid is a big fan of Harley Quinn. I guess most kids are. And, uh, 
Speaking of those dollar comics, I was able to score this nice little reprint of Harley's first appearance. Now, I remember buying this thing literally off a newsstand. Uh, there was one downtown. Uh, I would stop there on my way home from work, like 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. I remember uh, picking this book up, and I guess I sold it. Probably 50 cents a quarter at one point in time. Like a knucklehead. What a knucklehead you are, Mink. And then we got the, this fantastic, oh, Daffy cover. I love that. I just love the colors. Speaking of colors, we got uh, 150 Civil War soldiers for $1.49. Why, that's less than a penny a piece, folks. You can't go wrong. That's a great deal. Absolutely. And some Nancy and Sluggo. Oh, ain't that sweet. Little monsters. I I don't know. I got it for 30 cents, I figure. Who knows? Maybe I'm really missing out on something. This could be, you know, a, a long-lost cosmic saga a la Jim Starlin. It could be an amazing comic, and I just pass it by because I'm judging it by the cover. Uh, you know, you got your green and uh, orange bats. Pretty heavy. Pretty heady if you will. Then, oh, speaking of heavy, <laughs> we got Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. I didn't even know that there was a comic for uh, this particular cartoon, but here we are. So really looking forward to checking that out. Not as much as Fat Albert is looking forward to eating his uh, cotton candy there, but you know, it's hard to match that level of enthusiasm. Uh, some stones. Oh, yeah. And uh, a nice little streak of little Lottas here. We have 71, 77. Uh-oh. Your muffin is out of control, lass. And then uh, a real nice copy of 112. <laughs> She's stealing that man's hamburger. Little Lotta. Next, you are there. We find the enemy, fix the enemy, fight the enemy. And uh, this is a tower action series classic. And uh, you can bet we'll be looking at this on a future comics for breakfast. Or not. Maybe you shouldn't bet. Uh, first romance. And uh, this cover just sang to me. Uh, romance comics, they can be hit or miss. Sometimes they can be really entertaining. Other times they can be lame. But uh, I just like the idea of uh, masquerade covers. There's something really neat about uh, people at masquerades in comics uh, and representations of those things. I, I've just I've always found that really appealing. So that might be a new subgenre of collecting for me is masquerade covers. And uh, you may have seen... Uh, this one, in a comics I'm thankful for, uh, a couple weeks back, but I picked these two up. Spaceman from Dell. And these are pretty weird. <laughs> I don't have the time to explain them in depth, but uh, they're, they're pretty off the wall for sure. We have this uh, Betty and Veronica Spectacular. I just picked this one up yesterday. And uh, the girls are trying out their new serpent looks. Archie says, oh, for goodness snakes. That kid, he's got a quick wit. He should have like a talk show or something. Um, what do we got here? I think we're wrapping it up in this. No, we got one more. Uh, but uh, this was a gift from Charles Vare, uh, uh, old guy in good standing from the group. I was thrilled to get a copy of this when he realized I didn't own one. Well, he set out to remedy that. It's uh, Batman. Uh, 100 pager number 122 pretty excited check that on at then we have another romance comic there Beth is still dreaming he'll never ask her why does it take Peter so long to set the date I've waited and waited but I'm still only a bride to be it's because you have a secret love, you dummy. He might not even know about it. Uh, and then finally, we have a coverless copy of War Battles Number 1. And uh, I think this is a fairly generic uh, war comic uh, 
might be from the American Comics Group. There'll be a notation at the bottom of the screen there. But for a buck, I couldn't go wrong. Just, just to sniff, just to sniff the dang thing. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, oh yeah. <laughs> Get some. Wrapping things up, it's Steranko's History of Comics number two. Now I realized uh, I have actually shown this one before. I did pick it up a month or two ago, so might as well show it again. A good thing bears repeating. It's a fantastic treasure trove of information and wonderful artwork. Uh, just resist the urge to get the colored pencils out. As tempting as that might be. Don't do it, kids. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining us for this non-alcoholic edition of Having a Drink with Mink. Doctor's orders, don't you know? Uh, we'll be back to normal next time, most likely. I hope to see you this Sunday for Comics for Breakfast. For the old guys who like old comics network, I'm Jason Mink. Cheers.